All right, so we've kind of already got all the information, but now we're just going to kind of hit the different topics straight on, head on. So essentially, the question is, you're going to always have either a mixture of starting materials and the reactants or something like that, and you're going to need to predict the product. Um, alternatively, there may be a case where you'd only see the product and you'd have to predict the starting materials. Um, but whatever the case is, uh, a good place to start is what type of nucleophile or base do we have? Because weak bases and nucleophiles, what kind of reactions do they do? SN2, SN1, E2, E1, or a combo. Um, and uh, what we know about weak nucleophiles and weak bases is they're not reactive enough to react with an alkyl halide until that alkyl halide becomes even more reactive. How does an alkyl halide become more reactive? It becomes a carbocation. Um, so essentially, these weak nucleophiles and bases can't react with this by itself. They require formation of that carbocation. Um, and, and if a carbocation forms, then that means that it is undergoing a unimolecular type of reaction. So um, weak bases, nucleophiles, they wait around. They wait around, and that means that they are only doing E1 slash SN1. And then what's the other option? Will any of these not form a carbocation? Um, how are carbocations stabilized? They're stabilized if they have more alkyl groups around them, right? So uh, weak nucleophiles and bases either do a mixture of these two or they do no reaction. Um, so when would they do no reaction? Well, uh, let's look at our different cases here. We have a primary alkyl halide here, a secondary alkyl halide here, and a tertiary alkyl halide here. Um, this first one, if this halide left, if, if the electrons moved toward that X and left that carbon, that would be a primary carbocation. We can't form primary carbocations. So, right, no primary carbocations. Um, so because of that, this is not a strong enough nucleophile to do a reaction with that. This is gonna be no reaction. What about our second case? Um, well, actually, this is a good time for you guys to probably pause the video, try out what the products will be. Um, see if you can figure those out, and then restart. Okay, so you've already done that. You've paused. You've come back. Uh, secondary carbocations can form. Um, that means that the intermediate in this reaction would look like this. And when we have a, a, a unimolecular pathway, it's always going to be a mixture of SN1 and E1. Um, so one thing I said before is that E1, SN1, because they happen simultaneously, they're not very good at making one single product. Um, so let's, let's kind of look into that a little bit. Well, if this OH adds to this carbocation, the first thing we would note is that it's going to make a mixture of enantiomers. It can add to the front or the back. So the, the SN1 products are going to look like this. And we're going we're gonna to draw a line to indicate that this is happening down here. And this is two products here um, because they are two different enantiomers. Um, what else? Well, we can eliminate to form the alkene that looks like that. That would be our transalkene. We can eliminate to make the cisalkene, and we can also eliminate, and some of this will happen, it's going to be by far the most minor product, we can also form that monosubstituted alkene. So since we're technically have a mixture of five molecules, this isn't going to be a very good reaction pathway. Um, what about our tertiary alkyl halide here? Uh, same situation as the secondary, it's going to be able to form that carbocation. It's the most stable type of carbocation, a tertiary carbocation, so it's actually going to be a faster reaction than we saw above here, and then we're going to get a mixture of SN1 and E1. And this one's gonna be a little bit better, right? This one we had five products. This one we're only gonna have two products, right? Because this is technically, we don't need that squiggle here because this is an achiral molecule. Um, there's no stereocenter here. And then the, the E1 product is that, and um, that's the only one that's possible. So. Uh, this would be a case where this unimolecular reaction pathway is actually a little bit better um, 
because there are a limited amount of products and if we're trying to synthesize something this would be not a terrible option um so uh that is um weak bases and weak nucleophiles so uh, we're going to come back with strong nucleophiles and strong bases weak nucleophiles weak bases wait around for a really strong electrophile that carbocation is necessary but strong bases and nucleophiles what did we say about those they don't wait around they don't wait around. Uh, what does that mean? That means that they are only bimolecular reactions. So um, with that, we have kind of three options. Option one would be just SN2. Option two would be just E2. And option three would be an SN2, E2 mix. Um, so those are the options. That's what could happen. Um, what about this primary alkyl, sorry, this tertiary alkyl halide that we have with this strong base, strong nucleophile? We'll even throw in a polar aprotic solvent um, to make the reaction happen faster, like DMSO. Is this going to be SN2E2 or C, a mixture? Um, so go ahead and pause the video, think to yourself, maybe jot something down about your reasoning, and then come back. Okay, you've done that. Um, well, um, hopefully you said E2. Um, why is that? Well, for SN2, where does the nucleophile have to add? This OH- minus would have to add to the antibonding orbital of this alkyl halide, which remember that the antibonding orbital, sigma star, is on the back face of that carbon halogen bond, and it's very shielded right now because we have three different CH3 groups that are pretty large, all kind of surrounding that antibonding orbital. Um, so because of that, um, it's, it's really hard for that base to get there, and these carbon hydrogen bonds that have some partial positive charge on them, we talked about that previously, are just more accessible. So instead of an SN2 occurring, um, the only option is for them to bump into those hydrogens and do an E2 elimination. So this would be by far the major product of this reaction. Why was that? What do we have on our page? The blank orbital, the sigma star, that anti-bonding orbital, is too sterically hindered. It's too sterically hindered. Those CH3 groups are all blocking it. So E2 predominates. That's the, the major reaction pathway. So we only get E2 here. What about if we have a secondary alkyl halide? That's where we're going next. So what happens with our secondary alkyl halide? Um, Again, take a minute, jot something down, think about it. Is it going to be a SN2, E2, or a mixture of those two reaction pathways? You just pause the video and did that, now you're back. Well, if you think about it, uh, negative subtracted to positive. We have our negative base nucleophile here. We'll put in our polar aprotic solvent, DMSO, there. Um, so that OH- minus really mostly wants to come to the partial positive on that carbon. Um, but, and, and it's, not as, it's not as blocked as a tertiary one, right? We only have a CH3 on one side, a CH2, but we have, we have two relatively big groups around it. But it's not, it's not as bad as a, as a tertiary situation. Um, so it wants to get to there, it's a little bit blocked, and, and, and because of that, it turns out that usually this results in a mixture. Um, Sometimes the OH minus is attracted enough and, and comes in with the right kinetic energy and the right angle to bypass those two groups. And other times it's just coming at a different angle where it bumps into the hydrogens instead. So it's, it's kind of a probability thing. Like how often is it going to do this? How often is it going to do that? And for, um, for, for this situation, it's going to do a mixture of SN2 and E2. So the answer is C on this one. So that means that we're going to get a mixture of the backside attack product. We're added to that um, sigma star orbital. So this is the SN2 product. 
And then the E2 product that's going to be the predominant product would be that trans alkene if it came in here and grabbed one of those hydrogens. This is the most stable of those alkene uh, products. Um, it probably is going to form a little bit of those other products as well, the, the cis alkene and, and the mono substituted, but that's going to be the major E2 product. So what happens with the secondary alkyl halide to our bullet point on our course notes? The sigma star is moderately hindered, so we get a mix. The nucleophile would rather, if it had the choice, if it could just be perfectly lined up, it would rather go to the sigma star to the bigger partial positive, but with the moderate steric hindering, it's just a fact that it's going to often bump into the hydrogens instead, and uh, that would result in the E2. All right, now we're moving to the last option, primary. Or to the third option, the primary alkyl halide, what's it gonna be? Take a minute, decide for yourself, then come back. Boop, boop, you did that, great. Uh, primary alkyl halide, <clears throat> that negatively charged OH minus is attracted to the partial positive on that carbon. Is it very hindered? No, it's not, it just has one CH2. The only other things around it are these really small hydrogen atoms. So it's really easy for that OH minus to gain access to that sigma star. Um, so for that reason, it's going to be predominantly SN2. Um, that, that's just going to do an SN2 reaction. And this is going to be a major product that OH minus adding to that um, carbon skeleton. Um, so again, why was that? Maybe you already filled in some of these blanks. Maybe you want to stop for a minute and fill in the blanks yourself so you can really think about it a little bit more. It's always a good thing to think about things a little bit more. Um, but essentially what I, what I have in these blanks is the sigma star, so the anti-bonding orbital, is unhindered. Unhindered. There's only one CH2 around it. These other things are really small, so, um, so the, the, the negative charge is pulled there very easily. So SN2 predominates. Um, some of you might be thinking, well, yeah, well, it predominates, but it's it's random collisions, right? So this OH minus could run into the hydrogens in that position as well, and you're absolutely right. But they have to run into that position with enough kinetic energy to make the alkene product. And what I want to point out is that if T E2 did occur, um, the alkene would be the least stable type. The least stable type. What do I mean by that? Well, go ahead and draw the alkene product that would form. Pause it and draw that out. Great, you already did that. Um, it's going to be a mono substituted alkene. It's the least stable type. So if it's the least stable type, generally that has a higher activation energy to get to that least stable type. Um, so uh, the thing that is more likely to happen is the more downhill substitution reaction. Um, if, if we were forming a really, really stable alkene, um, then the activation energy toward that alkene would be lower. Um, so that's another reason why SN2 predominates here. So um, that gives you um, some ideas for, for how to look at the nucleophile with the alkyl halide and, and figure out what reaction pathway is going to be the most favored and will form in the most higher and, and will predominate essentially.